Okay, so boom, that time fat make fake the diabetic attack so he wouldn't get a violation. Me, I ain't know nothing about diabetes until probably a few years before I came home or just here recently, you know what I'm saying? I had a, a partner of mine pass away like a brother of mine. But I have seen people who had a diabetic attack at a young age and didn't know what it was. Uh, they were having a dice game in my, in my, in my, uh, in my mama uh, house one time. We, we were younger. You know, y'all don't hear me talk about them dice game. All the dope boys used to come down there. And then in the, in the kitchen, my mom and them, they'll be playing cards or they'll be sitting in there gossiping and talking, right? So me and my brother in the back room, you know what I'm saying, we playing the game. I'm trying to go get some juice. When I come through the living room, of course, Tim, I was hitting, boo, blowing the dice for me real quick, blowing the dice. I blow on the dice, he'll hit the dice, he'll hit, I sit right there and watch. My mama, she'll probably get up and do something and she see me in there, boo, come on out of there, come on out of there. I'm already know what's going on. Don't, don't, mama, don't, don't, don't act like you care about me. Don't act like you care about me. Because if you cared about me, for one, you wouldn't even be dating this drug dealer. You know, I'm going to tell y'all something about commercial break me, please. Parents kill me acting like they be looking out for their children. And they knowing children pick up on everything. You act like you don't want me to hear something. You always gossiping. You always talk. I know you half of your friends, you, you, you're a backstabber. You talk about all of them. <laughs> you know for a fact this man is a drug dealer. You know this man done invited 15 other drug dealers in here to have a dice game. You got two kids in the back playing a video game. Listen, you know we gonna come out of there being those. You know we on the door listening to see what, hearing what's going on. We come out of there. I come out to come in the kitchen talking about, get on out of there watching that dice game. Quit acting like you a responsible parent. Quit acting like you. You got, it's drug dealers in here. They brought they, they brought they uh, girlfriends that like drug dealers and you go with a drug dealer too. So appreciate that. <laughs> I'm talking to them. They talk about we convert. We having a whole little conversation, right? So I go in the kitchen. When I go in the kitchen, one of her friends is sitting at the table. She's sitting there. She's like, she said something like she didn't feel good. You know what I'm saying? She was talking about she was thirsty. They was aware that this woman was a diabetic at the time. I can recall this because I remember them saying, do it. I remember them asking, do anybody got a peppermint? And I'm guessing peppermint, you know what I'm saying, with that sugar. And if they got low, you know what I'm saying, they put that peppermint in there, it's, a, it's enough to, I guess, get their blood, you know what I'm saying, running or whatever the case may be. So when she say that, somebody said, somebody get her peppermint, somebody get her peppermint. So they pop the peppermint, give her a peppermint. She hit it. Listen, it was like magic. It, was, it didn't even take long. She was like, oh, okay, I'm better now. She like... Now, me with my little man itself, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at how she doing her mouth right. She, I said, boy, she'll eat a mean one. I said, boy, what's wrong with me? I'm looking up. She got the lick on her lips. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just saying, she said, boo, what you doing? You need, I said, I said, I ain't doing this. She said, go on back in there. I said, she go, she just kept doing it for her right. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, she lethal with that. You know what I'm saying? She doesn't have a diabetic. <laughs> listen, she doesn't go into a diabetic coma dealing with me. Because listen, I, listen, <laughs> I was just sad, though. So I go in the room. That was, that was one of the memories I can remember. You know what I'm saying? When people low on sugar, they give them a piece of candy. I'd have seen that a couple of times in my life. But I'm not knowing how serious it is for people who haven't a diabetic coma, you know what I'm saying, when they need that sugar in their system so they can, you know what I'm saying, get back up to par, whatever the case may be. Uh, so in the penitentiary, we had this guy, we had this guy named Fat Mac, right? And Fat, listen, he he's so big, they ain't got no belt to fit him in the penitentiary. And, it, and, and, and ain't nobody that worked back there in the leather, in the, in the leather plant can fix, can make him a belt. So he always sagged it. And the folks, listen, a lot of them folks in the penitentiary, the guys, listen, they, they want to write you up for anything. So I'm already knowing they were going to get him eventually for sagging. Hey. He, he barely can even breathe. Listen, he, he barely can even breathe. So I'm sitting in the cell. I'm cool. I'm chilling. I'm minding my business, right? Fat Mac down at the bottom of the steps. 
He waiting for me to come out of the cell because he can't say my name loud. One of the guys coming up the step. One of the guys coming up the step. He tell Joe. Tell Joe to come around. Let me real quick. He come up, knock on the door. Pop, pop, pop. Hey, hey, Joe T, Fat Mac wants you, bro. Fat Mac wants you. I come out the door. Man, what's up, bro? He like this here. I come down the step. I, man, what's up, bro? I said, what? I said, yeah, let me go and get you a summer size, Rick. Hold on, Fat Mac. I go up the steps, get the summer size right. Let me tell y'all something about Fat Mac. Fat Mac got to wear the compression socks. I don't know if you know what the compression socks is, but what compression socks is for people who got high blood pressure, it help. I mean, with hot, with, with the got diabetes, it help with their blood circulation, you know what I'm saying, in their legs, you know what I'm saying? So he got to wear these compression socks. And if he ain't got them state boots on, whatever shoes he got on, listen to me, I, I promise they had, to, they had to come straight factory made because his foot was so wide and fat, the shoes was always kind of busting out of the side. You know what I'm saying? So when he walked, y'all already know this ain't no this ain't no uh, body shame or nothing. But my guy was a little heavy. He was heavy up top and below, so he was just a heavy guy, point blank period. So his feet, his feet little wide. So you know what I'm saying? His feet so heavy on the soles of them shoes. The rest of his the, the rest of his heel or whatever the side of his foot is running over the sides of both of the shoes. So it looked like it, he's stretching the threads of the shoe. He's stretching the whole form of his shoe into a whole different thing. So when when I go up and get the summer sizes, I come down, he's sitting, and he always holding his pants like that. He holding his pants because he big. Diego Hoover, I always mess with him, right? I come out with the summer size. I'm finna toss it down to him to really mess around, to mess with him, because I'm knowing he... He gonna be, and then he he gonna have to try to bend down to get the summer size. So I come out, I flip the summer sizes to him, right? The summer size hit the He bend down to get the summer size. I heard G.A. who? Hey, 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 fat man. Man, pull your pants up, boy. You look nasty. I said, man, quit you, quit using my stuff now. Quit stealing my stuff. Because that's what I used to say in juvie. That's what we used to say in juvie anytime we seen somebody sagging. Because the corporate always used to tell us sagging was something that they used to do in the penitentiary that, to let people know that, that they wanted, you know what I'm saying? So she would always say, pull your pants up, boy. You look nasty. So I done brung that to the pen. I said, man, pull your pants up, boy. You look nasty. So I hear him tell Fat Mac, hey pull, hey, pull your pants up, Fat Mac. You look nasty. He get it. He, he, he like this. He gone to the cell, right? Everybody know Fat Mac got a diabetic issue. He come in the penitentiary because he went into a diabetic coma at a dice game. He got a warrant out for his arrest. He got a warrant out for his arrest. He go into a diabetic coma. They spook. Of course, they call. The ambulance come and get him. I guess they run his name. He already got a probation violation. They send Fag Mac to the penitentiary. Now, penitentiary rules is in effect. Let me explain something to you. When you go before the judge, when them folks give you your time, when you come through classification, them folks are aware of your health problems. But let me tell you something. If you you think you got a problem getting some health care out here, you go into the penitentiary thinking you finna get some good health care, you is insane. Them folks give you ibuprofen for everything. You go up there, listen, you go up there for, in, you go up there and you tell them folks you think you got internal bleeding and they check you, you got internal bleeding. Them folk gonna give you ibuprofen. Gonna take this ibuprofen. What? I'm bleeding internally. This ibuprofen gonna help you. I promise you. You, <laughs> listen, you go up there and been, and, and done had a fight and done got stabbed. Them folk gonna patch you up and give you ibuprofen. Point blank period. That's the best thing we give you. Gone back to you. <laughs> you go up there and let them folk know. You can go up there and tell them folk you got an addiction. You trying to, them folk gonna give you ibuprofen. I'm talking about for everything. Then they gonna charge you for it. They gonna charge for it. You gonna get a pink slip. Folk gonna slide in there. You gonna, what is this right here? The folks gonna charge you for that ibuprofen. <laughs> Point 
blank, period. Them folks do not care about your health when you come to the penitentiary. And that's why I really wanted to hit on this video. I had a partner of mine, commercial break me please. I had a partner of mine that I grew up with. We call him Greedy Gut, you know what I'm saying? Long live uh, Gut uh, Jay. He like a brother to me. Um, Y'all probably don't hear me talk about Jay before when I talked about my brother getting sent uh, to the group home when they got caught with the dope in the car. It was a guy I used to kick with all the time, which is uh, actually my child's mama brother, uh, Jay, used to rap. T.O.A. is the name they used to go by. He passed away probably about a year ago. It's probably almost a year. It's probably a little bit over a year. He wasn't aware of that he had diabetes. He didn't know he had diabetes. And he wasn't feeling good. He ended up going into a diabetic coma. Stayed in a diabetic coma for like a year. I mean, for like a day. And he ended up passing away. Now, I remember having a conversation with my, with my cousin Wayne. And Wayne was just talking, me and him, was, we was conversing, talking about, you know what I'm saying, changing, changing the lifestyle, changing your lifestyle and stuff, and getting better, you know what I'm saying, what you eat and how you carry yourself and what you, you know what I'm saying, exercise and all that or whatnot. But like I said, a lot of times as black folks, we wait until the last minute or we wait before. We wait, we live a reckless lifestyle, get put on notice, then we decide if we want to get better or not. In this situation, this man going to diabetic home, come into the penitentiary, and now he expecting these folks to take care of him. These folks ain't finna take care of you. That's just not how it go. And when he and and he fighting a federal, he fighting a federal charge on a, on a gun charge. Now a lot of times in the penitentiary, the feds what they'll do is they'll let you sit in here, serve your time, wait till you getting close to get out, or wait till you get out, and then they'll get you and they'll take you up to the feds. Or they end up charging you. You can fight your cases while you in the state fighting with the feds. If you get the fed time, the feds will swallow the state sentence and let you go finish uh, your time at the feds and the fed time will eat what they say, will eat the state time up. So Fed Mac fighting a state, fighting a fed case on the gun charge. He's sitting in here with diabetes. He got to sleep with a mask on. He got all of these. And he GD, and he GD, and he always said, and he always sagging. So I go, I go down, I go down to Holly Fat, I go down to Holly Fat Mac one time, cause one of the brother come up and tell me, you know what I'm saying, man, bro, always sagging and this is that, and then bro, you know what I'm saying, bro, slouchy, and he basically try to tell me as a security, he don't believe Fat Mac should be a part of the structure. They want to remove him from the body and say he can, he can say he GD. But he ain't gonna be, they basically wanted to pull him off account because he was a weak link. If anything pop off, he can't defend nobody. He barely can breathe. And if somebody starts jumping on him, we gonna have to help him. And dude really ain't in a position to defend himself. And being in the penitentiary, guess what? You ain't you ain't eating better. You eating burritos all the time. They full of summer sausage. They full of they full of chili and cheese. You eating all kind of tater chips all the time. You got candy all the time. You got all this food. You know you are that. And then the folks are always telling you, "Hey, bro, man, need a chill." Boom, boom, boom. Man, and you doing so, bro? Them they basically don't want him on count. I go down to holler at him one day. Pop, pop, pop. Hey, fat man, let me holler at you real quick. Come on in. Come on in, G. I pop the door. Man, bless this seal. I close up. Boom. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. We're looking at Josh. Man, what you got going on, bro? You good? Let me cop a squat right here. Yeah, I ain't doing nothing, Joe T. I'm just sitting here chilling, bro. I said, man, bro, hey, bro, them complaining, bro. I said, I already know, G. They always, they always talking about something, bro, but it's GD with me, bro. It's GD with me. I said, bro, you got to start eating better or something, bro. You, how I'm supposed to do that in here, Joe T, dog? On the health this thing, they probably got on the commentary. It is tuna. Like, that ain't, that ain't enough right there, Joe T. Like, what I'm supposed to do? I said, man, you, I said, man, you get on straight tuna. Like, what you mean? Like, bro, you can't keep eating all these noodles and stuff. You can't keep eating noodles. Bro, look at you, bro. You can't be in here eating like that. And you smoking. Like, man, it is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just, I said, and you know, brother, them ass and remove you from the structure. Man, bro, I ain't going nowhere, bro. It's GD with me. They ain't gave me my G, bro. They can't take my G, bro. I said, bro, if you sitting in here, you unfit. 
Not only that, you you they gonna say you an embarrassment. <sighs> what you mean an embarrassment? I said, bro, look, bro, look what you got going on. I ain't trying to knock you or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But as, as I'm sitting here talking to him, half his body hanging. He's sitting. He's where he's sitting at on the bed. I'm watching all the rest of his body hanging off on there. You know what I'm saying? Not to knock him or nothing, but I'm sitting, I'm sitting here watching. I'm like, dang. And I'm thinking to myself, how is he even watching all of that? Like, bro, what has you got going on? But in this situation, I'm I'm looking at him. He got the compression socks on. I'm watching how he done took the shoes off. The shoes is sitting out to the side. I said, that's got that right there is abuse. That like he done abused them shoes so bad. I, I know them shoes hate to see him coming. I know they hate to see him coming. I had the, the form it. I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, dang, bro, this is crazy. But in my mind, I'm realizing where we at, even in his, where he at, in, even in his condition. I said, man, these folks do not care. These folks are, listen, these folks will lock up your great granddad at 85 years old and give him 85 years. Listen, and, he, and can be in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? People I've seen in a penitentiary in a wheelchair. I'm talking about come in. You know what I mean? People I've seen walk around on crutches and need, man, walk around on cane. Them folks is old as dirt. Them folks do not care. And then, not only that, he when he need his when he need his medication, this man got to walk all the way to the clinic. This fat man, he got to get up, put his shoes on. He he ain't got a belt. He always sagging. He come out. He got to walk all the way up to the clinic. So as I'm sitting right here having a talk with him, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, if something happened to him, happened to him in a penitentiary, like that's that's a sad case. I don't know if y'all ever thought about this, but I used to wonder. I don't know why I used to think if you died in the penitentiary, do they let your body go back home to your family for them to bury you? You know what I'm saying in your city. I, I never knew what happened to the body. Matter of fact, I won't ask my dad if he called me tomorrow. I, I never knew. I'm thinking if you die in the state, I always, I'm like, man, maybe they got a place for your body to go. Like, you still belong to the state. I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I can't recall a situation where I done seen somebody die, get stabbed or something happen, and then they go home. <laughs> <laughs> the wheelchair, <laughs> they, or, or, and the family, and they turn the body over to the family, and they get a proper burial. I have absolutely no idea how how that how that works. So after I had a little talk with, him, I'm trying to tell him, you know, what I'm saying he got to get his health up. He don't want to do that. GD, just like we got the buddy buddy system, when you get into it with a brother, them folks will make you hang with a brother on the buddy buddy system if y'all been beefing, if y'all got some kind of animosity towards, you know what I'm saying, each other to make y'all get along. Same thing when it comes to habits. If you had a habit and them folks know you like to smoke, them folks know you like to know you like to drink, whatever the case may be, them folks will put you on restriction and watch you and make you get a violation for that. Now, they already know if Fat Mac got a got a health problem. GD supposed to try to look after one another. So the goal is, man, he gotta slow up on that eat. So if he going to the microwave, a brother going to go over, hey, bro, you know you're not supposed to eat, eat, be eating like it, boom, boom. You need to eat in portions. Like, we at the, we basically trying to make sure he eat in portions and he ain't just at the microwave all the time. Get what he started doing? He started getting his silly to go eat, warm up the stuff. He in the cell, he in the cell sneaking and eating. Like, that's crazy. But... In his mind, he probably thinking, man, GD don't run me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to eat when I want to eat. Truth of the matter is, everybody trying to watch what you got going on. So, we out, he out he out on the rock, like I said. He out on the rock one day. He's sitting on the bench. He big. So, at his big old back, he got a, he, his back, his shirt come up on his back. So, of course, as a big person, his crack hanging out a little bit. And he, and he a little rusty. You know what I'm saying? And he a little rusty. Diego Hoover come out of the cell. When Diego Hoover see it, he don't say nothing. He come and get me. He come to the cell. Pop, pop. Hey, hey, Joe T. Let me holler at you, bro. I said, man, come on, man. He popped it up. He said, he down there right now with his crack out. I said, who? 
He said, Fat Mac, man. He said, man, I done told him about it. I said, bro, you know he ain't got no belt. He said, man, bro, he can't be down there doing that. People down there laughing. You know what I'm saying? He can't defend himself. If somebody get the joking down there, he get mad. Who going to fight for him? He can't fight nobody, bro. He go in there and say, they going to beat him up, this, this, and that. He said, man, he, he got to get rolled up for that. I'm already knowing he set it up for me to go down here and see what's going on. Another brother already see it. And come and coming up to the cell while me and Diego Hoover in there talking. They hit the door. Pop, pop. Hey, hey, Joe T, let me holler at you, G Bot. I said, man, come on in, bro. He popped up. Hey, bro, I'm finna strike, bro, up right now. I said, who? What's going on? Man, fat Mac down there. I just told, bro, man. I just told, bro, man, pull his pants up. You know what I'm saying? Or go to the cell, you know what I'm saying? And put his grades on or something. And so, you know what I'm saying? He, he said, man, he down there, his crack hanging out. He talking about, bro, anybody looking at my crack, bro, they just trying to. I said, bro, I'm finna strike. I said, what he said? He said, bro, he said he ain't finna, he ain't finna cut. He said, man, if somebody looking at his crack, they trying to see a crack. I said, that don't, I said, what? He said, bro, I'm finna strike, bro. I said, man, bro, go on and take care. Diego Hoover said, come on, walk down there with me real quick. I'm gonna show you. I said, that was up. We come out of the cell. We, listen, listen. I'm, I'm cracking. I'm, listen, man. I'm literally going to see if somebody crack hanging out. To, to to validate this write up like this this is what's going on at gd like they come to get me want me to go down here and witness this man crackers out i said man come on bro so we walk we walk around he do me like that look <laughs> look look joe t i said man hey fat man what's up bro i said bro pull your pants up bro man they came my way up and got you with it joe t he get up, man. He walking over to the cell. I go over, I said, bro, they finna write you up, bro. He said, for what? I said, for sagging, bro. He said, man, fuck them. Fuck them tripping. They write the man up. They want to get a man three minutes. They want to give him three minutes, right? They write him up. He got a fed case pending. Just so happened. He don't want to. He don't want to go to court. Them folks come in to take him to court. He fakes a diabetic attack. He fakes it. He basically he ain't fit to go He fakes a diabetic attack. They take him up to the clinic. He they reset the court date. Mister Mister, because they got to get on the road. He fakes a diabetic attack. Goes up there and say he ain't feeling good. Them folks he, he reset his court date. Point blank period. He come back to the pod. He come back to the pod. Everybody asked me. He told them folks he had a diabetic attack. He had to go up there. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, and they sit him up there for however long. You know what I'm saying? He gonna, they rescheduled this court date. He going, he going in a couple of weeks, right? Them folk come in and bring me that right up. They were like, yeah, bro, I'm finna strike him up, this, this, and that. I said, well, go on. I said, I'll go down there with you because they... Dude who wrote the write-up, he finna go down there. He finna read the write-up off to him, you know what I'm saying, and see, you know what I'm saying, how he plead, folks. So I go down there with him, right? Diego Hoover see us going. He come with a, another brother walk over. I said, oh, they want to cross him out. We go in the cell, bro. They read they read the write-up off to him. They ask the brother, you know what I'm saying, man, bro, we really just looking out for you, bro, and this, this, and that. Bro, so, Man, bro, y'all just don't want me to be the folk, bro. They were like, nah, it ain't that we don't want you to be the folk, bro. You ain't trying to take care of yourself, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things. He was like, bro, you can't even work out with us. Your workout literally, we supposed to work out three times a week, bro. Your workout literally is you walking around the pod, bro. And when we be walking, you be walking, bro. Did you... <sighs> bro, if a war pop off right now, who you going to defend, folks? If a war pop off right now, if two if two gang members come over and get on your head, bro, how you gonna defend yourself? Man, I ain't going for all that, G. Ain't nobody finna. Man, bro, you don't know what somebody finna do. So what y'all saying, bro? Bro, how you plead to the writer, bro? He plead guilty. They asking me, bro, what you think the sanction should be? I'm looking like, what, bro? Say, what? What's up? I ain't even really trying to get in on situation. They trying to give him a no cover. A no cover for sagging. This is this is the first write up, even though they done told him. I said a no cover. They trying to prove to him that he can't defend himself. I ain't finna approve. I ain't finna go for a no cover. 
We talking about a man. Listen to me. He ain't finna be a. They, in my mind, I'm saying that's gonna turn into a case. They y'all sudden to to to, to unalive this man in here. So in my, I'm like a three minute. I'm like they can't do no no cover. I'm like that's gonna have to. But even in the cover, I'm saying to myself, cause they G. Listen, commercial break me. G. Them folks believed in breaking you. And when I say breaking you, they want to prove a point to you. I'm listening to these folks already tell him, listen to me. You can't defend yourself. If somebody get on your, you, is we knowing you got health issues. They 